Hi, we're all Jay. I'm Gus. I'm Joe. And these are our five essential tracks. Uh, the first track we've chosen is Knee Deep in the North Sea by Portico Quartet. Uh, they're a sort of modern jazz group. They, they all met at university as we did and um, uh, half of the band grew up in the same city as I grew up in Southampton so I, I know their I know them and I know their brothers and we kind of grew up together so they were three years in front of me so I watched them sort of all meet at university start writing music together and I kind of it was so such an inspiring thing to witness when they came home they would they would have all these songs and you'd hear their songs and then they released the Mercury nominated um, Knee Deep in the North Sea um, and so when I finally went to university I, I used I used their sort of uh, album as their first album as a soundtrack almost to my first year at university and I kind of got these guys into yeah. Portico Quartet and Knee Deep in the North Sea is, is um, the kind of it's a, just a fantastic track and um reminds me of when we were writing together early on in our career. We mentioned um, we do use the words knee deep in the North Sea in, yeah. in, in our song Dissolve Me, which was a nice little kind of way to, I guess, give them a sort of, you know, a tip of the hat or something. Just yeah. say thanks for the inspiration and yeah. maybe get people to go and listen to it, you know, because who might not ordinarily have listened to jazz or, you know, music like that. The second track is... Reckoner by Radiohead. Um, we often are, well, we're sometimes compared to Radiohead. We often, people ask us what we think of being compared to Radiohead. Um, Radiohead comes up a lot when people talk about Alt J, basically. And it's no secret that we're big fans of Radiohead. They're probably, you know, the, the fav they're probably our favorite band as a band. Um, and I think just it's not just their music, but it's their attitude, it's their career, it's the way that they've continued to evolve as a band and remain relevant after, you know, eight or nine albums is pretty amazing. Um, and still hugely successful as well, which is inspiring too, really, to see a band that are that cerebral and left field do so well is inspiring to us. Mm. <laughs> think you know like Reckoner you, you listen to Reckoner and it's just I don't know you just can't quite believe how great that song is and how how can you how can you do something similar like that that was something that kind of I don't know almost haunted me for a while because it was just so beautiful it's so beautiful it's so perfect um, and I think both particularly Tom and I I think we were we, we yeah we almost bonded over how how intimidating a song that song was well Reckoner was um, um, that was the first song that um, I think opened up the kind of can of worms so to speak for Tom our drummer mm -hmm. into f enjoying more genres um, than just heavy metal and technical death metal and industrial metal and all that kind of hardcore stuff he he found he found something in Radiohead's um uh in rainbows that um again yeah opened him up to seeing the musical world in a different way and 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 then from that he explored and it really changed the way he wrote he he kind of approached drumming and and um later his producing and stuff so it was a song that I think we bonded over. I think I was a, I was already a Radiohead fan, 
I think you were as mm, well. Mm. Um, and he discovered it for himself and then wanted to talk to us about it. And we were like, yeah, I know, I know, it's good. <laughs> but, it, you know, I think it changed the way we um, listened to music together. So our next track of choice is Movements by Dan Mantle. Uh, he's kind of a music producer. Mm. I don't know much about him, actually. No, I don't know much I, about no. Dan Mantle. <laughs> this one song that we we used, used to when we were like a younger band we used to hire cars or vans to go to gigs around the north of England where we lived and we were driving one time I guess from probably Leeds to Sheffield or something like that yeah. or Manchester and we were crossing the, the Pennines on this road called Snake Pass which is a really windy narrow road through these kind of mountains and mm. it's a very beautiful piece of landscape it's probably known as one of the UK's most beautiful drives you can do and um, we were driving through there sort of, and it was a pr coming on for nightfall and it was snowing. And we listened to this piece of music, all four of us in the car, and it was just a very... We all shared something, I think, listening to this this track, and we it was unspoken kind of um, just feeling very together, aware of the beauty of our surroundings, and um, probably just thinking, of, you know, pretty positively about each other and what we were doing together, yeah. you know, just sort of feeling... It's like the planets, yeah. you know, that uh, the planets aligning kind of thing, or like when you were... Uh when you open up a brand new bottle of milk and a brand new cereal packet. It's just like a perfect moment. It's like we were all enjoying mm -hmm. that song. We were in a beautiful place and it was like everything was aligned perfectly to experience something together. It was great, I thought. Track number four that we've chosen is a song called Corin by Metronomy. Um, they're another band who were quite a big influence on us in the early days. I think we felt that what they were doing was unusual and, um, you know, creative and pushing things forward, really. Um, and they were, I suppose, just ahead of us in a sense, really, weren't they? They had that, a couple yeah. of albums out, and particularly their third album, um, The English Riviera, which this one comes from. <laughs> to a lot um, when we were driving around doing early gigs you know we nowadays I don't think we, we don't listen to so much music together no but I think you know back in those days we, you know we'd be in the car or the van and we'd put albums on and it was a big you know it was a big thing that we did together and um, this album we played it you know to death really so much and we we got to support them a couple of times on this tour which was really cool we were pretty in awe of them and um, it's a it's an awesome song it's an uh, unusual time signature and it just has everything I like about metronomy in there, the amazing synths and the, the weird beats and really good lyrics as well. Um, it's, it's a catchy, it's a catchy number. Mm. I remember the album artwork for that album being really nice. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we, we all... Were, you had it on a t-shirt. I had it on a t-shirt, yeah. Um, and I lost that t-shirt. Like all t-shirts. Like all good t-shirts. They all leave you eventually. Yeah. So our... Uh, fifth and final track for five essential tracks um we chose um a song um by adele um she released her second album i think in 2011 sounds about right a what was it 21 i think so yeah and um she had a song on there called rolling in the deep mm. and um i think again it's it's, it's a period of time where we were moving from um, being a pub band that plays not that often no. in Leeds, but that was kind of being tempted by management and label talks of working with labels and stuff and, and the promise of touring regularly and playing regularly. Um, and so it was a really exciting time for us and we were kind of, you know, looking at all of the musicians that had come before us and Adele had released a second album and it was a massive hit, like... Scary I, big. Scary, scary big. I 
I think it was the comeback single, wasn't it? Yeah. It felt like, you know, it was the first single off the album and it was an amazing piece of work. It is, you mm. know, that song. And I know a lot of people that have seen Adele and everyone says it's amazing. Mm. Everyone, everyone at least cries twice during an Adele show, I think. Maybe we should do that. Start crying. Yeah. We should, we should cry as we walk on. Yeah. So it'll get the audience. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to try and cover the Adele song, you know. Rolling in the Deep? Yeah. Oh, really? I think you could do, you could, you could belt it out. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. I, um, I think you'd be good. I mean, I'm not. No, I, she's got, she's a, she's a belter. I don't have a belter's You're voice. You're not a belter, no. 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 She's got, she's got like five lungs on her. Mm. I've only got the, the, I've only got two. Mm. I don't know any others. Um, um, I I I would like to do. Um, there's a song on Mulan, the Disney film. I'd love to cover. As which one's that? The one that's like I can't remember what it's called, but it's like Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Oh. Mighty as a fortress, something like that. It's really. I good. haven't seen it. In a long it's a time. great song. I'd cover that because um, it's just so. Um, I don't know. Um, you you feel a surge of energy when you when you hear it. Well, I do. So I'm going to do right after this. Watch Mulan. That's good. So those were our five essential tracks. Let us know what you thought of them. Drop us a comment, like, or even subscribe. Thanks for watching.